Hi, I'm Danny O'Brien. I'm the International Director here at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and I'm joined by Erica Portnoy, uh, who's a staff technologist, and we're going to talk about today's PGP news. Erica, before we start, where does, where does PGP fit? I know people always think about it as this tool that people use to protect their communications, but what kind of communications and what does it do? Uh, so PGP is specifically used for encrypting your email. That is end-to-end -end -end encryption. So if I want to make sure that only me and you can read messages, PGP is the tool that does that. And that's because most email actually gets sent in the plain text, so anyone could like look at it who might have access to and uh, between the the person that's sending it and the person who's they're trying to communicate. That's with. right. When I send you an email, it will go over the internet, go through various servers, go through the network before it finally gets to you, which means that various intermediaries will have access to the contents of that email if it's not encrypted. So for almost 30 years now, PGP has been a bit of software that was written so that people who were particularly concerned about uh, protecting their email from uh, surveillance, particularly from, from even powerful actors like, like governments and states. They could run this software, they'd sort of take their, their, their message um, and their email client would um, secure it, encrypt it, and also sort of sign it so that people knew that it was from them. And so it's like kind of a plug-in or an add-on on top of, of your normal email system, right? Yeah, and PGP is one of the most manual systems that we have. So if you're very worried about an attacker, very worried and want to make sure that the person you're talking to is actually who you think you're talking to, PGP gives you lots of ways to check that that's the case. Right, and it's 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 got a kind of a reputation for being tricky to use because it's it's pretty old software. It's the kind of thing that you see people typing on terminals and things like that. But if you really need that kind of protection, you'll spend some time learning to use it and um, and and. and be safe, right? Yeah, it wouldn't be out of place in a hacker movie, right. and it is hard to use, but once you do learn to use it, you get all those benefits. So PGP stands for pretty good privacy, which is kind of, you know, ironic, sarcastic kind of way of, of describing it. But what we've seen today is this, this, this paper that actually says that there's a pretty serious flaw in PGP if you use it for email. Um, so could you, in really simple terms, <laughs> explain what that flaw might be? Yeah, so this vulnerability has to do with the fact that PGP was created 30 years ago and it used the top end encryption for that time. But turns out that uh, one of the so one of the, the things that you need for encryption is integrity. That means when you send me an email, I want to be sure that nobody modified the message along the way. Right. PGP doesn't necessarily require that always. There's a specification called Open PGP which is actually an internet standard that many of the most common uh, PGP tools implement. So when you implement the standard, you can make some choices about how you receive incoming mail. And essentially, if you add an integrity check, should I, what do I do if the integrity check fails? Should I right. show you the message anyway? Many mail clients ignore this integrity check and show you the message anyway. So that just means though that, yeah. that if somebody's messed with the message, you're gonna see a, a garbled message. I mean, what's the... Uh, what's yeah, the, well, the that's pro the problem. The problem is that in the type of encryption called uh, CBC mode encryption that PGP uses... Good use of three-letter acronyms. Continue. <laughs> uh -huh, good TLA, yeah. Uh, in this type of encryption, it doesn't scramble the entire message. It only scrambles a little bit of the message. And what this particular paper does is it finds a way to exploit that. It changes around the message in a way that it knows it is able to, and it essentially injects these exfiltration channels directly into the message. Okay, so exfiltration. Yeah, the exfiltration is the fancy way of saying that I can take it from your machine and send it over to my machine. So, let me get this straight. So what we have is somebody sends you an email and it looks like super secure, it's PGP encrypted, mm -hmm. the industry standard or whatever. You, your email client decodes it because they usually do that automatically and inside there's like a surprise and because someone's messed with it and what's what's in the surprise yeah your hidden email surprise is what looks like a perfectly normal email to you but on the back end it's automatically sending the contents of the message to somebody else an attacker but the person already knows the contents of the message because they've sent it to you, right? Oh, that's the problem. Okay. The problem is that you can use it for any message that's ever been encrypted. Oh. So essentially, I send, you sent me an email two days ago, 
an attacker gets a copy of the encrypted version of that email and sneaks it in to an email that you just that the attacker just sends to me today. Right. And and I'm decrypting any email that comes to me because mm -hmm. the whole way that PGP works is people s make it so that only I can decrypt it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is great. I can decrypt everything. But I'm decrypting this message that has a message that I don't want someone else to see, decrypts that, and then uses some trick to actually send that to the attacker. Yeah, one of the examples that the paper gives is it'll put it directly into an image tag. So when you're viewing an email that has an image inside of it, it fetches that image from a remote server. And okay. to get that image, your mail client will automatically, behind the scenes, go to a particular URL. Now, if that URL is on the attacker's server, and instead of saying, hey, I want this particular image like cats.gif, it'll say, hey, I want this particular image, entire contents of your previous encrypted message. Oh, so it's just sneaking it out. That's just the sneaking exfiltration it out the back door, bit. exactly. All right, so this sounds pretty serious because the people who use PGP really don't want their messages decrypted in that way and then sent out to a remote attacker. I guess I got, I've got two questions. One is, what kind of person could actually use this right now to, to attack someone who's, who's doing that? And by attack, like this is actually a technical term, which means not like attack attack, but that's yeah. what we call people who are trying to break systems like this. So who could do that? And what can PGP users right now do to defend themselves against this attack? Uh, yeah, that's the trouble. The trouble is that essentially anyone can do it. Reading this paper, I was shocked at just how easy it is to exploit this vulnerability. Okay, but they need to have a copy of that previous email yeah. that they want to decrypt. Exactly. Right? So, so um, if I am a, a malicious sysadmin, for example, and I have a copy of your uh, encrypted emails sitting on a mail server, or if I hack into a mail server and get those emails, I could do it. Essentially, it or a government who's just government listening into who everything. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, if, it, you know, if it was encrypted over the network, if you were using Start TLS, for example, which just encrypts between servers, uh, then... Okay, that's yeah, a little... Okay, yeah, we're getting a little too far. Yeah. <laughs> There's a but, lot of different threat models, but essentially if you have a copy of the PGP encrypted email, we previously thought that that meant that nobody else could see it, but it turns out that that's all you need to exploit this. Okay, so... Now people are like, okay, uh, I'm worried now. Is there something people can do apart from, you know, just running around panicking? Uh, the thing that people need to do today is they need to either disable or uninstall their PGP plugins for their mail servers. Okay, so this is breaking the link between PGP, which is doing the decrypting, mm -hmm. and their email client there that, that can read HTML, read fancy emails, and could be used to send this data out. Right. Exactly. The specific problems that we know about that are most easy to exploit right now are when it gets passed from your PGP software to your email software. Okay, I have a question. I, so I use PGP because mm -hmm. I'm school, old school that way. Um, I have old emails yeah. that are encrypted in PGP and I read them in my email client. Like how do I, if I break that link, how can I read my old emails? Uh, so we're going to be putting out a guide for all the steps that you'll need to do this. The best thing that we could say right now is to use the command line tool called GPG. Which is the heart of, of, yeah. of PGP, that's the thing exactly. that people use. And the command line, going back to when we described this as being what people do in a hacker movie, it's yeah, going to be tricky, right? Yeah. But I also imagine that people are going to work on tools to make this mm -hmm. easier. Yeah, so there are patches being written right now. Uh, two broken mail clients uh, that hopefully we'll, we'll see coming out within the next few weeks is what we're hoping to see, but those just aren't out yet, so we don't know. Ideally, you'll be able to uh, put this patch into your machine and then decrypt all your old emails. It'll still be pretty dangerous to get new emails, though, now that everyone knows about this vulnerability. You're already taking a risk just by decrypting it at all because I just talked about one particular exfiltration channel you can, the rest of them are just limited by your imagination. Not my imagination, yeah, by the by imagination of like, right. So, yeah. so, okay, got this, don't use PGP for now, turn it off on email, wait for people to give us some guidance and, uh, as these patches go on. Um, 
I still need to talk to people. Do yeah. I just send like emails? Do I just switch to the old email system? Uh, You're laughing at me. <laughs> no, I mean, that's if you want to remove any protections that you have, you can just send it over an unencrypted email. But I assume that's not the case you're talking about. No. Presumably, presumably you actually want to send encrypted messages. Oh, I want to send something securely. Right. Right. Yeah. And so you should probably use one of the many other tools out there. For example, Signal is an end to end encrypted messaging tool that is cross platform and will fulfill many of your email needs. Okay, and Signal sort of most people use it on a mobile phone, but there's there's Oh, a, I use the, it on there's a desktop app. Okay, I okay. use that. And that's that's ty- that's more like, but it's more like an instant messaging thing rather than email. Right? It is skinned to look like an instant messaging app rather than an email client, but it does all the encryption that PGP did and more. And you can send attachments. And you can send like attachments, okay. pictures. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I want to do if I want to communicate securely. We are expecting stuff to come in and and, and help people. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but the main right now, it seems to me that this is like when the World Health Organization or the CDC says, like, there's this bad thing happening and for now, like, wear a mask or, like, mm-hmm. separate. Don't eat the lettuce. Don't eat the lettuce, yeah. right. So right it's now... very dangerous right now to go around decrypting emails because essentially what this shows is that how easy it is to use the fact that you're reading an incoming message as a decryption oracle to give the contents of any old encrypted message away. So the thing that you would normally use to send secure messages is now a way that attackers can use to decrypt those messages and like pull them out and send them. Any old message forever, the second you read any new incoming message might just be revealing the contents of old messages. Okay, thank you for that less <laughs> reassuring. But but I mean, there are some things people can do and we're gonna continue putting information up on EFF.org as we get new bits of information. But for right now, cut that link between your email system and PGP if you use it. Um, uh, use alternative end-to-end encrypted systems like Signal and we can point at, um, to other um, uh, tools. We have a site called Surveillance Self-Defense, ssd.eff.org, which can explain um, other tools that you can use. And uh, keep up to date, find out what's happening. Um, we'll, we'll hear stories and reports uh, in the news, but the people to really listen to are the people that provide your email client and we'll be sending out updates. And, um, and as here at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. We're going to keep on this and we're going to keep on sending messages to let you know what the safest and securest thing you can do to protect your email and uh, and those of your friends and colleagues. Erica, thank you very much and um, looking forward to finding out more. Thank you, Danny.